be here this afternoon and I want to add my words of welcome to this new and very much needed institution uh, for Washington, to the American cultural landscape. I think it's unique to the American cultural landscape. And then of the greatest importance to be added to the never large enough list of entities that are created and committed to enabling communication, conversations across borders and boundaries. And with this terrific mission that this museum has, to convene conversations across time, space, generations, genders, professions, and women of all walks of life and from all walks of life. And since I benefit very much from knowing your founder, or our founder, Janice, well, I know that this endeavor will be a success. I have another point that I would like to make that also is very relevant to the founding of this museum, and that is the importance of literacy. And literacy of all kinds, so reading, writing, and arithmetic, the old 19th century sort of, um, sort of three R's. They're needed more than ever today if we are to be educated and engaged citizens. Democracy requires literacy. And we need to assure that everyone in our society has equal access to literacy in order to be actively and engaged in our government. And with this terrific mission that this museum has, to convene conversations across time, space, generations, genders, professions, and women of all walks of life and from all walks of life. And Janice visited with us about a year ago? Yeah, I think it's a year. And we're just yeah. amazed right. that you put all this together in that sort of a time. So congratulations. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. How do we define women writers? They're novelists, they're journalists, they're teachers, they're lawyers, they're lawmakers, they're editors, they're screenwriters, they're publishers, playwrights, literary patrons, poets, and in fact, in many cases, in our country uniquely, they were pioneers of one sort or another. So we now see Janice following in that pioneer spirit of breaking new ground and traveling to perhaps unchartered or unknown destinations. Tell us who your favorite American women writer is. Oh gosh, that's it has really to be hard. romance writer, of course, probably. <sighs> <laughs> um, well, actually, I write young adult um, mysteries, so I think probably. I'm going to have to go with Carolyn Keene, um, just because she kind of started the whole thing. I, I don't know where I would be without her. Uh, and tell us about your favorite American women writers. And well, um, I, one of my favorite books is To Kill Mockingbird, so I would have to say Carolyn Keene. Immediately thought, by her very demeanor, she must be a person of great substance. And she also has shoes to die for. <laughs> <laughs> Women journalists like Margie Kunz have had a great impact on us all. Some of their contributions are legendary. Nellie Bly, the intrepid reporter for Joseph Pulitzer's New York World, who went undercover and shined a bright light on the brutality and neglect of women patients at an asylum. She also beat the, the fictional <coughs> Phileas Fogg's record by going around the world in 72 rather than three days. Marguerite Higgins, an American reporter and trailblazing war correspondent who covered World War II, the Korean War, and the war in Vietnam. Her bravery and professionalism helped advance the cause of equal access for female war correspondents. Irma Bombeck, who started out as a reporter and became one of America's most beloved col columnists by chronicling life's absurdities with a common sense, down-to-earth approach that made us laugh and sometimes made us cry. Nancy Hicks Maynard, the first African-American female reporter at the New York Times, who covered everything from race riots and student takeovers at Columbia University to the Apollo space program. With her husband, Robert, she was co-owner and co-publisher of the Oakland Tribune and co-founded the Maynard Institute for Journalism Education. Catherine Graham, who started her career as a reporter 
and became publisher of the Washington Post after her husband's death. There were no role models for Mrs. Graham when she took over the company, but she led the Post through Watergate and the publication of the Pentagon Papers. She became the most powerful woman in publishing and one of the industry's most respected leaders because of her courage, integrity, <coughs> and smart business decisions. The numerous women journalists who literally put their lives on the line by reporting from danger zones around the globe. They chronicle the perils and the realities, the horror and the heroism of a world in crisis. What binds these women together is a desire to tell the truth, to shine a bright light on stories significant and small, to provoke change, to express themselves, to have a voice, so today, we honor all American writer, writers, even though we are spotlighting women. And we honor them for their efforts to uh, let us know their thoughts, share their innermost feelings, and hope that we will find a connection to them through their words and their writings. And we also use this occasion to let everyone know that there is in Washington a new house of knowledge. Joining others, but there can never be enough. And so we are so delighted to have you and thank you, Janice Law, for your vision and vitality. I would also like to thank two of my colleagues at the Library of Congress, um, who are not here, but who made a great effort to present a little, to have a little booklet to present to you today uh, and the inauguration of this, um, of this wonderful museum. And they are Janice Ruth and Alice Lotvin Burney, and they are at the Library of Congress, and they are the authors of the uh, content of this book, but they're also standing in the ready to help you in any way that they can. Best of luck, Jen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much.